Well, I am here in one of my favorite places in New Mexico with one of my favorite people, my Uncle Mike Stickler. I am so blessed to have six uncles on my mom's side. And they all have done so much for me. The relationships I have with them are so dear and I'm so grateful for it. Well, you're not gonna have much left of those bumper bars when it gets done. How are How you? you doing? I'm really good. Yeah. You made it here. Yeah, barely. Barely, huh? <laughs> yeah. I, I read an article about you. Me? And you're wolf hunting. Yeah. Did you read that? Depends on what article. There's been lots of them. They were picking on you hard. That's all right. Stand in line and take a number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have six uncles on my mom's side. And they are just like older brothers to me. Well, I'm the only guy with the tag. Yeah. This should be easy. I'm pretty sure. I just told Dale and Marcus that of all of our family, if I had to pick one guy to make the shot when the pressure's on, it would be you. The early on in, in Randy's life, he spent we spent a lot of time together, and uh, uh, I would take him hunting or fishing or in beaver trapping sometimes in the spring. And Randy always wanted to go, so we'd always take him. It's hard to put into words how much it means to me to, to be here with Mike, show the gratitude I have for him and his brothers being such wonderful uncles. This is where home is gonna be for the next. Don't tell me we're already there. What do you mean already? This is it? Yeah. <laughs> now to get to take him to a place that I, I just am enamored with. That means a lot to me. We got the Taj Mahal for Mike. Oh, get in the middle of it. So you got all that room to put your stuff. Holy man, that is the Taj Mahal. It, so this, all this is BLM land and what we're on now. Yeah. Well, let's go over there and look over that knob we're going to. This hunt is taking place in late October. These elk are in a post-rut mode. Post-rut elk are the hardest elk to kill. That one. Yeah. And there's a ridge that goes off the back side. You see that timber right there? Or that all the scrubby trees? Yep. On the left? Yep. Well, there's another ridge you can't see from here that goes that, that way. And there's a canyon that drops 800 vertical feet. And they're always down in the bottom of that canyon. Oh, but we're not going there. We are? <laughs> we are, if there's one down there. We, once we got camp set up, we decided, well, we're gonna go scout. We gotta get set up before dark, don't we? I know, the sun will be set here before we get out to our glassing knob. It's an hour walk. I gotta there. rest as soon as I get in the other side of the gate. <laughs> we're in trouble then. <laughs> I got a bowl right here. We're 300 yards from the truck. How in the f did you ever see that? He's standing right there. He stands out like a turd in a punch bowl. Oh yeah, He's standing I know. Standing right in those trees, below that rock cliff. Yeah. If we find one in a good spot like that and you don't shoot him, you're walking home. Well, yeah, that one wouldn't be that hard. No. You could get him. Your brother Bob with one leg could get yeah. him out of there. Yeah. The first first day that I went out, we pegged down four nice bulls. I saw where the, all these elk were, and I thought, well, I'm not going to have any problem getting there and getting to them elk. Would you shoot that one? What in a heartbeat? Yeah. <laughs> wow. His, his main beams are probably 55 inches long. Yeah. He's six on each. Yeah, his tines are super long, but they're nice. And we're glassing 
places where we can see in, into these faces where a lot of times there's timber and there's just little pockets. And you just pick it apart with your optics. I think Mike's kind of excited. Uh, but we have all day tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday, season opens on Saturday. So who knows where they'll go, where they'll be. They might just leave. You just never know. Today is the day before season and the woods could fill up with hunters. Uh, right now we're the only camp out here, but we could end up with a small city out here. The scouting process is really elimination of a lot of the terrain, judging is there gonna be a lot of hunting pressure? Where will that hunting pressure come from? What water sources have water in it? Which water sources don't? Where has the allotment been grazed? Where has the public land allotment not been grazed? And a lot of that dictates where the elk will be. And here in New Mexico, these are short rifle seasons. They're only five day seasons. You can spend those five days in the places where the elk are more likely to be. Do you have a cup? Yeah. Mike, you need more coffee? Huh? Need more coffee? Is it made? Yeah. Yeah, I'll always drink more. You wouldn't know it by looking behind me. There's a huge rainstorm coming out here. And rather than stay out here and get wet, we're gonna head to the truck. Windy! Season opens in the morning. We gotta go find Big Hank here. Keep an eye on him. Even in a 35 mile an hour wind, we're going for a hike. Yesterday in the afternoon, evening, we saw the, a really nice bull right over here about half mile. This morning we saw the same bull right over here and then he fed down into this canyon. So I'm, Hoping I'll catch him feeding on the side of these canyon walls sometime this evening. There he is, found him. Seriously? Yep. <laughs> he's uh, he's bedded on a flat little bench out here. So there's a roll that comes like this, and he's right on a bench below that roll, and I'm sure that's what's keeping him out of the wind. Do you want to spook him, stay and spook him, or do you want to leave? Let's go. I'm as excited as you get. I'm afraid you're going to miss him tomorrow. No. I'm going to no. stay up all night calming myself down. <laughs> And so we get up opening morning and the, and the plan was. That big bull has always been over on this side. Might be lucky enough to spot him. We wanted to be the first ones in there. So we left camp little, like two hours and 20 minutes before shooting light. We got a license. 
Rifle. Yep. Ammunition. Yep. Tag. Yep. It's about to get interesting here. <laughs> I'm excited. And I'm so excited I spit out my cow cow. Alright. And I'm thinking, where are all the people? There, there's got to be, there's a lot of tags for this unit. This is a well-known public land and trailhead. Where is everybody? I knew that if we hiked in there real slow, we'd start getting to the good elk country just about the time legal shooting light came. This never works out this way where you can find and locate a bull a fourth time in a row. Ready? Yeah, let's go. And so we just take off. And I'm making a straight line towards them because the wind is perfect in our face. And once we dropped off that little bench, now we're just using little gullies and, and rolls of the hills to get closer. You can just see the tops of his antler. We get to this little ridge, we're gonna stay behind it, and we're gonna get up to this next little spot. There's some rocks and bushes there. You'll be able to just lay down on one of those rocks and you'll have a shot. I got up there and I was breathing pretty hard. I got there and I was holding my breath and I got the bowl in my crosshairs. This is a slam dunk for Mike. He's an experienced hunter. This bull is dead. And I shot <laughs> right over the top. And this bull turns and looks back where the bullet hit the hillside. I'm like, Mike, you hit high. Just put in another round. I can't believe it. I could not find that elk in the scope. Them guys, the, the cameraman and Randy, they cow called and they got him to stop on a little saddle out there, broadside. I couldn't find him in the scope. He's way out there, Mike. He's 500 yards. Bull got away and. Uh... Going around. You see that knob right there? We're going to get above him. Let's go get our stuff real quick. I, I I could just see Mike. He is nobody felt worse about that situation than Mike. He he was devastated. God. I really was uh, low on confidence after that. Yeah, I know. we took off towards the bull, trying to cut him off. Figured we'd probably get another shot at him, but we got down there and. He's gone. He must have went around. I don't know where he went. I think he used one of those canyons to just sneak out of there and head to the west. And to the west, it's all private. I don't know where I think that he went. Where? Up there. Maybe he 
came down here and he hung a hard right and he was up in that canyon. And in a day or two, he's gonna come out of that canyon and he's gonna go back over where we saw him the first night. I'm going right to this saddle and I'm gonna side hill from that okay. saddle. That's a good idea. All right. You lead the way. I'll be dragging up be behind here. Slow. Huh? I'm gonna be going slow. So am I. Okay. I might even go slower. See him? Oh, he's a little. He's a little guy. Do you want him? Do they fight people? There you go. <laughs> he bit me. Well, I, I, that's what you deserve to get bit if you want to play with him. Last night, yeah. something bit me and it was. It's kind of stung or something. Yeah, sometimes they'll get in your sleeping bag. Yeah, keep your tent. <laughs> they only try to bite you when you mess with them. Why'd that one bite me last night? What then? Probably a cricket. Well, I'm gonna have to shake everything out when I get back. I would. I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, shake your boots out in the morning. Yeah, I do. I do. Why in the hell do they live up in this cold weather country then? <laughs> cold weather? Well, not no, but I mean at night. I, I thought they freeze when it gets down to freezing. Well, no, they find tents and other stuff to crawl in. They, they dig, they got these little holes all over. Did you notice that one badger hole I pointed that snakes go in there? You see all the spider webs in front of that thing? That's from them. That tarantula hole. If you sat right next to that hole about two o'clock, It'd be like the tarantula marching band coming Oof. out of there. No, I can't deal with that. That's driving me off. These donkeys, these burros here, have been coming to my tent every night. And they stand out there and make all kinds of noise. Clack their hooves on the rock. <laughs> and then they keep me awake all night. So we're sitting there discussing what should our plan be. And we look way out off the end of the mountain there, about, I don't know, I think it's two and a half miles away. And there's two bulls bedded in the shade up there. That's a long haul. I've been there, we've shot elk up there, and it's miserable for anybody. And having drug Mike back and forth across all these hills and canyons, I'm thinking, no, nah, probably not today. So we just watched them. All right, let's see what they do. Maybe that's an opportunity that we can think about for tomorrow afternoon. Maybe Mike could have a shot. Yeah. Tomorrow we know where they're at. They're coming here? Yeah. Right here. I'm game. They call me next day Newberg. Next day? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's get them the next yeah. day. So what do you want tonight, brats or tacos? Tacos. Bison tacos. And my good friend Hank Shaw is gonna make fun of me because I'm still using McCormick's taco tacos evening. So that night at dinner, we're talking about what the plan is for the next day. And I suggest, you know, let's go back out to our glassing knob in the morning and let's just look around and maybe we can put something to bed. And we're all in our minds, I think, hoping that, well, maybe that bigger bull will come back in here and we're glassing the whole way up there, but he's far gone. He's probably out on private somewhere. We get to the glassing knob and we peek over the edge and instantly there's an elk down there. Because it was a really, really good setup if it would have been a legal bull. In this unit, it's a mature bull unit, which means it's got to have at least a six inch brow tie.
we're watching and watching and it is a pretty slow morning. I, I, I'm willing to, I'm willing to do whatever you think we got to do to find one. I got this idea. Well, Tell me if you're buying or selling my idea. Okay, let's hear it. We're going to walk out of here. Go back to camp. Grab a sandwich. And then we're going to drive over to that point right there where we saw those three bulls last night. Yep. Get as close as we can. And we're gonna park close as we can. And according to my GPS on X system, it looks like we have about, oh, a three quarter mile walk out to where I want a glass. Well, it sounds like a plan. That worked? That worked for me. Okay. About mm, nine o'clock, the wind just started howling. Oh no, this is not what we need. Ready? Mike turned his hearing aid off, so he ain't gonna hear anything. So we're strictly on hand signals right now. But in the wind, if you've ever had a hearing aid, you know how the wind messes with everything. And we're sitting there for the longest time, class, and everybody's kind of in a different spot, looking, 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 and then we'd all come together, and no, not seeing anything, we'd go different ways, and the wind is just screaming. I come walking over to see what's going on, and Dale is like, there's a bull just got up out of his bed, right over there where we saw the other bull yesterday. Right. So, you know, a two and a half year old bull, either four or five on each side. I go over and get Mike, I'm like, hey, what do you want to do? We can get within a couple hundred yards of this bull. Do you want to shoot it? And I said, yes. Grabbed the rifle and we had it on. It, it was a, a real challenge for me to get down here and I thought, boy, once I get down here, <laughs> these guys are gonna have to probably pack me out. And there was the bull, he's standing over there looking at us. Well, he's there and I was on that rock and I was comfortable. And the elk just stood there. And Mike thought he missed. Well, then I was really, really getting depressed because I'd already messed up on the, on the, on the big one. Do it again, do it again. And then they said he's down. Hold on, he just fell down. Huh? He just fell down. You might have drilled him every time, but I could see a rock. Are you me? And I'm like, Mike, you got him. He's dead, you got him. <laughs> oh my word. Oh, I can't even believe that. And I mean, that was like a, just a massive relief. Oh my God. <laughs> Congratulations, Uncle Mike. Uh, I got to thank you and the camera guys. I, I'm, I'm exotic, to say the least. Uh, exotic or ecstatic? Ex that's what I meant. Yeah, ecstatic. Yeah, yeah this is exotic. Yeah. And after Mike realized that he really did kill that bull, and the disappointment went away that he thought he'd missed again. To see the look on his face and the smile and the hugs and the handshake and then just that, that, that's the memory that is gonna live with me forever. Well, I thank you, Randy, for 
It wouldn't have happened without you. Well. That's for sure. It's just a very small repayment for all the time you took yeah. me hunting, fishing, trapping. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the hardest things that I've ever done. Partially because I'm too out of shape and too old to be an elk hunter. But if you're determined enough, you can do it. When we can get together, we always, always have a great time. And we reminisce about the hunting and fishing and trapping and the times that we've done together. He and I just got to visit for about probably an hour as we walked out. And that there are special people in your life. And if you were to go and do something with them, I don't care what it is. Maybe it's hunting. It doesn't matter. Just go and do it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it.